Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back, listeners, to the finest phototainment in the world. That's right, you're listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, an irreverent look at wedding photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Dustin, it is Thursday night. Coming up this weekend, it is the Revengers Bend Game. Revengers Bend Game. Revengers Bend Game. Yeah, Yeah. you should. I just want to say that you should know how much I love you because I was offered today a ticket to go see Revengers, Revengers Butt Game or whatever it's called, and I was I was like, oh, I got to do a podcast tonight because I'm a big deal with Stephen Van Elk. Um, That's your nickname in our house. Big deal, Stephen Mm -hmm. Van Elk. Oh, big deal. um, I love this. Yeah. And so, because my wife always wonders who I'm up with late at night, that's Mm -hmm. not her. So she said, he must be a big deal to pass up time with me. I said, well, he is big deal, Stephen Van Elk. Um, So yeah, I just want to let you know. I put you, my priorities are in check, in line, you know, just saying, a little bit. I, you know, I, I feel so blessed to be put above Revengers butt play for you. Um, Mm -hmm. I know how much you love butt play, so. (laughs) It's better than an end game. You know Mm, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it anima game? End game? Anima? I don't know. Words, you know, who needs them? Dustin, let's move right into follow up trademark John Syracuse. From Kristen Murray. Murray? Murray? M- Marengo? M- so, I think it's French. This comes from our Facebook group. So, not wedding related at all, but I'm crying over your dirt convo. We do have a lot of dirty convos. Laughing so hard, I'm crying. We do have a lot of dirty convos. Yes. Definitely not the dream scenario you may think it is. Lots more goes into making topsoil than people realize. The machine alone costs over $400,000. Then you have to add in the cost to run it, maintain it, the weather, you can't make mud, and material, labor, other heavy machinery to load the screener, cost of the land, and doing business, etc. So yeah, you're going to pay me to dump your trash dirt, and you're going to pay me to pick up clean topsoil smiley face all i have to ask though is is Kristen dealing dirt is she already like taken our dirt mafia idea she's a dirt dealer she's a dirty dealer yeah she's flipping that dirt obviously Kristen's got a lot of experience flipping dirt that's what it sounds like sounds like she's done a little bit of research like she's maybe like already you know looking into purchasing this equipment if she hasn't already uh, i would guess kristen probably has a trailer down in new mexico and she's uh cooking cooking that dirt you know off the grid but i think i honestly i haven't listened to the episode yet so i have no idea what we were talking about <laughs> but um <laughs> but honestly i, I don't admit- know what i said five minutes ago hi i'm dustin mckibben i'm a goldfish blink oh what hi i'm dustin mckibben i'm a goldfish blink oh what hi i'm dustin mckibben i'm a goldfish but what i was trying to say if i misspoke i apologize goldfish but um the places that are dealing dirt here in indiana are not even necessarily selling topsoil. This is literally just the fill dirt that was dug, and then they are reselling the same fill dirt. So, because actually, topsoil is quite easy to get um, because you can buy it from places like you said that screen it and sell it as a you know a commercial grade product. But what people are having trouble finding is the cheaper alternative, which is just the run of the mill, dug a basement, dug a pond kind of dirt. Mm-hmm. You got to get on next door, that terrible, terrible social network for neighborhoods. Is that and, still uh, around? Yeah, next door down here in Noblesville, I see all the time. I've got fill dirt. Really? Anybody who wants it, just come by and grab it. That would have been really helpful like a while ago, Stephen, yeah, if yeah, you could have loaded that up into I, your I was going to load that into car. my SUV <laughs> and drive it up to you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> just put like, um, like a tarp on top. 
and load it with the dirt and then wrap it up like a Christmas present. Yeah, no, and I'll just bungee cord it to the top of the SUV. Yep. Yeah, no, I don't see any <laughs> way see this it. could fail. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything that, any ways that could go wrong as you're driving down 69. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever goes wrong when you're 69 and buddy. Uh, more in follow up uh, news. On. Um, listener S. Nadella wrote in. He just wanted to let us know he's disappointed that we didn't know who the current CEO of Microsoft is. Mm. But damn it. Listener Nadella, S. Nadella, he didn't say who that CEO is, though. So. But uh, oh, hey, Dustin, we got more follow up on that, though. Listener oh, T. Okay. Apple wrote in to say he's pretty certain it's Billy Microsoft. I, I don't think there was a period. I think it was just Tapple. No, no, there's a period. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay. even more follow-up on that front. Listener L. Page? Am I reading okay. that right? L. Page? Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, Spanish. Mm, okay. L. Page. Listener L. Page wrote in to ask if we did a Bing search to try to find the CEO of Microsoft. I didn't think of that one. Mm. What's Bing? I don't know. I think Corinne puts those in my smoothies. Oh, dude, have you been drinking Bing? Mm, yeah. Is that new? That new like energy drink? I've not been drinking it, but my father has been. Oh man, I tried it. It was very sugary. Yeah. Basically, everything I hated about Red Bull when I first tried Red Bull in college is Bing. Mm. Yeah, it's bad. I don't do energy drinks. You shouldn't. They're very I just bad do for coffee. you. Coffee. Yeah. yeah, I just do coffee and Mountain Dew Kickstart and uh, sometimes the new Red Bulls that are sugar-free. Mm. I am coming up on 11 months without any soda. Proud of you, buddy. Going to celebrate with a bourbon and Coke when I hit 12 months. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right but, back on it. Just yep. falling off the wagon. So speaking of falling off the wagon, Dustin, what are you drinking tonight? Because I see something in front of you that is not a soda. I am drinking a good, good Wisconsin beer. A line and hookah. Summer shandy. Because here in Indiana, it is a miserable wet mess of <laughs> wetty wetness. And Dustin is trying to get into a summer state of mind or at the very least, a spring state of mind. So I thought I'd just drink myself to that place. And what better way to do it, Stephen, than with a good old summer shandy. Go, oh, well, Dustin, you just took a drink, and it, I feel like you're, you're Tanner. You're, you're literally oh, getting Tanner in front of me right now as in, we're... Inside and out. Yeah, I know. I can hear the brightness in your voice. It, it's like mm. all of you is just lighting up. Dustin, oh, wow. Dustin, you're Light beautiful. You're beautiful. You're so beautiful. I didn't know Lion Kugels could do this to a man. It's only the uh, the original summer. And your, your teeth are getting whiter. Is there a bleaching agent in that? Mm, possibly. What are you drinking, Stephen? What is going down the slippery slope that is Stephen Van Elk? Stephen Slippery Slope Van Elk. That's me. Uh, you know, tonight, Stephen Slippery Slope Van Elk is drinking... A Scarlet Lane beer. That's right. Oh. I've got a Dorian Stout. It's an espresso beer. So, you know, I'm mixing that uh, that caffeine, that coffee we were talking about earlier, mixing it in with my beer, making mm. a great Indiana beer for a great Indiana man like me, Steve Van Elk. That's what they call a roller coaster beer. A roller coaster beer? Yeah. Yeah, because it brings you up downers. and mm-hmm. takes you right back down again. Yep. Dustin, we got a big show today. We got a big, big big, show. Perhaps the biggest? Yeah, no. we Is it it, it huge, Stephen? Is it a huge show? That was a really bad bad Was was that your Trump? That was terrible. No, no, let's do it. We got to work on this. You got to work on our comedy shops here. So uh, give me two more Trumps. Is it, the, is it the huge show, Stephen? (laughs) Is it the huge, perhaps the greatest show of all time? But I would probably, if I was doing a Trump, I'd like mispronounce your name. Like, is it is it Stefan uh, Vinik? It's the greatest show with Stefan Vinik. I like that you're doing a thing with your arms and your hands where it no longer looks like you have full human-sized arms while you're doing these impressions. Instead, it looks like you have Muppet arms, and they're just kind mm-hmm. of like flopping around in front of you like a Muppet when they talk. It's uh, It's great. Yeah, you have to do the arms to really channel that inner... Uh, presidential vibe and feeling 
Mm -hmm. Well, first up, Dustin, I wanted to share a story with you. A story from a wedding I shot recently. It's not really a long story. Yeah. A Steven Van Elk original. So a few weeks ago, I was shooting a wedding with a second shooter. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the wedding, she had a memory card throw up in air. Oh. Now. She's shooting Nikon or Canon? Nikon. Oh. How much for shitting on Canon? (laughs) Why would you do that? I've had cans throw up airs too. Don't worry about it. Every, every camera brand throws up an air eventually. Uh, no, mine. Mine are good. Mine are golden. Mine are great. <laughs> Last time I was at your house, I saw like eight recovery softwares on your computer. So <laughs> <laughs> that was user, user air. <laughs> uh, so she had a card throw up an air, but she was shooting the two cards. So not a big deal. Good. Yeah, no, it was like I said, it was a very short story. Uh, just, just wanted to put that out there. Dual cards are, you know, a good thing. And uh, but, but moral of the story: everything was good, everything was fine. Card was fine. Yeah, no. So it, we're we're doing happy stories today. We've done a lot of like stories about like really crappy situations. So I think what and, Steve uh, was trying to say is shooting to one card, totally okay, guys. Actually, it would have been okay because I examined the card when I got back, and even though it threw up an error, um, all the photos were still fine on it. So yeah, yeah, because shooting to one card, totally healthy, totally safe. <laughs> Don't waste your money on a second card. There was a uh, there was one image. It was like the very last image, the one that forced it to throw up an error. I'm guessing, which was like corrupted, but it wasn't a work usable shot anyway. Like I could tell it was blurry from the bits I could see. Mm. So. Yeah, no, bits. we're all good. We're all good. You know, if she'd been shooting to one card, we still would have been good. So, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Moral Don't story. worry about it. Get one of the new mirrorless cameras and stop being scared of one card shooting. Steven has come around. We'll call him good old come around Steven Van Elk. No, I've not. If anything, I'm more scared, more paranoid than I ever have been before. Good old come around, boy. I think you're going for like a reach around joke, but you're saying come around and it's not working. (laughs) I was shooting uh, for a pizza parlor this evening and uh, one of their dessert, they do like a cookie pizza Mm -hmm. and it's like all high school age, like girls who work here. And so I'm like trying to be like on my best behavior like not doing any like bad oh, puns. Yeah, yeah because any, typically like, when I work with you on shoots and it's not high school girls, you're just like a trash box, just a dumpster <laughs> full of filth that is just dropping on everybody. It's just like F this, F that, F you. Exactly. Um, and so I wasn't that way for this particular shoot. And sex joke, sex joke, sex joke. Goldfish. She was she was um she was putting like a cookie pizza thing on the table for me to photograph. And I asked if there was like any whipped cream or ice cream or something we could put on top to add a little bit of pizzazz because it looked kind of blah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, we put like a drizzle icing on top. I was like, oh, perfect. Cool. I'll get an action shot of you like drizzling this icing onto, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> onto this cookie thing. And oh my gosh. So like, you know, like the little icing packs that you like get for like toaster strudels? Yeah. Toaster strudels. It was like one of those, but like, you know, 10 times longer. And so she's like holding it out over this cookie pizza thing. And I'm like trying so hard to like keep my composure here. And she's like goes to squeeze it so that, and I'm picturing like a little bit of like, like a ketchup size line of icing hitting Mm -hmm. this. So I get that perfect little icing swirl going up and down this pizza thing. And instead it's just a big (laughs) glob of white goo just splats on the pizza. (laughs) Uh, maybe you had to be there, Stephen, but it was... I don't understand, Dustin. Why is this so funny? <laughs> Why is a big glob of white goo splatting onto the cookie pizza so funny to you? And I held I held it together. I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, that's uh, unfortunately not very photogenic. And she totally was just like whoosh, right over her head. Because um, you didn't so say anything dirty or disgusting. Correct. So. Because that, I was not in a place to say anything dirty. Or disgusting. Maybe you should just not say dirty or disgusting things altogether all the time. Make that your new life. It is. That is my new life. I, sh- I save those dirty and disgusting things mm-hmm. solely for you, 
come around Stephen Van Elk. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I'd been there, I would have, you know, just maybe stepped in for her and I would have been the one who did the loving uh, icing thing for you. You know, real real good close up on my hands so that you can really see how uh, the icing excretion. Yeah, well, I was going to say like a real soft, soft man's hands, um, how they look close up on camera. It's a good look. Um, Mm. You know, my nails are just delightful. I got barely any scars on these knuckles. You know, I've never punched anything in my life. Yeah. Just got the softest hands. Yeah, I love it when somebody touches a photographer's hands. Maybe this is just me. And they're like, wow, your hands are so smooth. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm a photographer. I've been oiling this lens up for hours. <laughs> I do no manual labor. Do you see how well lubricated all of my lenses are? <laughs> uh, do you lube your lenses, Steve? Dustin, this week <laughs> I had a bride and groom include on their must list that they wanted a photo of them signing the marriage license. Mm-hmm. I think this might be the first time I've ever seen that. Really? We always shoot it. I've never seen it on a must list, though. Oh, but it, like, actually be on a must list? Yeah, Hmm. like, this is so important to us, like, it goes on the must list. But in their defense, I've found several of our brides are rather lazy, which is why we don't even ask our couples to make must lists, if you will, because when you ask them, they're like, oh, I need to make a must list. I have no time. I work full time and I'm planning a wedding and I'm trying to find a house or whatever. And so they go on like Martha Stewart weddings.com or the not.com. And they're like, where can I find a wedding photographer must list? And then they just print that off and you have the most ridiculous things like that on it. And they're like, Oh, perfect. This saves me so much time. I just want all of these send to photographer done. You know, this must list only had like two or three things on it, and one of them was the signing the marriage license. So it was really? actually very important to them. When it came time to sign the marriage license, they came. They're and got just not me. very religious. They're more like legal type mm-hmm. people. I don't. I don't so know. I couldn't the religious speak to act that. at the altar meant nothing to them, but seeing the signed official document Th- really... that actually makes them married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I see it. The sight under God was no bueno. Um, no, they, they came and got me and Jen was out shooting photos of the cocktail hour and stuff at the time. And they were like, oh, should we get Jen too? We really want to make sure this is captured really well. And I was like, no, I think I got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> were you like saying things like, no, stop. Turn the pen 45 degrees to the left. Hold on. The light's just a little too bright. Can you scoot over just a hair? I mean, were you being like super particular about it so that you like really honed this photo for them? Yeah, no, I was actually just like, yeah, no, I got Did it. You? And I pulled my iPhone out and I shot it all with that. And they're like, <laughs> do you want to use your professional camera? And I'm like, nope. And you were like, technically this iPhone cost more than my professional camera. Quote nope. Unquote. Nope. No, it did not. <laughs> what kind of cameras are you shooting with over there? Well, I'm just saying the iPhone Max S or whatever is a very expensive phone at full retail price. Oh, well, I am shoot- I still have an iPhone 7, so I'm back in the past. Yeah, I know. I know, Steve. Um, back to your scenario here with the marriage license. Did mm-hmm. you provide pens? For the photo, because you knew how important this was, did you break out a little folio, no, 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 folio no. of pens? Because you knew ahead of time that the must-have list had three Wait, things. Did Jen talk to you about this a... already? No, <laughs> they didn't have a pen. They used a sharpie. Oh my gosh, Stephen! <laughs> so disappointed in you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good time. So, <laughs> I feel like if I was Jen, I would be like, Stephen, we have to restage this. Jen would have been like, I actually have several pens in my bag. I was waiting for this moment. Why didn't you come get me like they told you to? (laughs) Because you're like, "Uh, Jen had my iPhone and I said I was good. Yeah. So I I just, I thought it was crazy. I've just never seen that on a must list before. So, uh, I mean, you know, my feelings, Dustin, I think that photographing the marriage license is something that we do, but we shouldn't, shouldn't do because it's, 
not ever a good shot. It's like somebody's bending over. And so like you get the top of their head or maybe the side of their face while they're signing. And you can't really tell that it's a marriage license in the photo. And it's like, unless I had like three or four minutes to like set up a few shots to really do some storytelling with it, but they don't, they want like a documentary style shot of them just like in the action. And it, that's fine, Steve. Yeah, that's what no, they it's want. fine. It, it gets the job done. It's just, it's not fulfilling for me, Dustin. I'm there to get fulfilled. That's because you're come around Stephen Van Elk. <laughs> I didn't say I was there to get satisfied. You need to just come around to the idea that you're working for these people. I want to know the other two things on their must-have list. Was it like beating a pinata? Was it like shoving cake into each other's face for the first time? Was it like playing footsie under the table during dinner? <laughs> I forget what the other two things are. They didn't seem important to me. Was it like one of those scandalous, like him pressing her up against a wall? Oh gosh, no! While her dress oh. was pulled up, Ugh, kind of things nope, that's nope, going nope, viral nope, around nope. Facebook, going viral on all the wrong parts of Facebook, <laughs> which is just all any part of Facebook. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> the gutter book, Dustin. But you know, to get us back into good news, I want to I want to go back to the good stuff because we we've been here in the bad stuff talking about Musk lists and. Uh, rubbing your scent on stuff, you know, and we mm-hmm. got to get back to the good stuff now. So okay, a photographer and his wife in Brazil have replanted a forest. Did you read about How this? How big was this forest, Stephen? It, it was a very big fo- forest. I saw photos. It was, it was giant. It was like a, a farmer's field. So it was small enough that it could all fit into one photo. <laughs> With a drone <laughs> very high up. <laughs> oh, so now it's a drone photo. Oh my gosh, I'm going to murder you. You have the damn article in front of you. You could pull it up and look, you asshole. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, it's not a drone it's... photo. Damn it. <laughs> going to get specific. No, but uh, I did see this article and I thought, man, this makes me feel like a schmuck because I don't plant trees. Yeah. So it, it was like a, it's a photo and it shows like some hills and they're completely. 120. Nine million hecta acres. Yes. Okay, there you go. You found it. So it shows this hill, like in Brazil in the year 2000, it's completely barren, just nothing growing on it at all. And then it shows it in 2013, and there's like a vibrant forest. There's no bare land anywhere. It's it's beautiful. We should, we should uh, probably specify it's not like these two did it all on their own. Mm-hmm. They had help. They founded an institute called the Instituto Terra. Terra. Yeah. And uh, they planted, what is it, 4 million saplings? So I just, I wanted to highlight something good a photographer was doing in the world. Um, the photographer and his wife in question were, uh, sub- oh man, how am I going to? Mess this up and pronounce it. Sebastio Salgado and his wife Lelia. Lelia? Lelia? But if you scroll to the bottom of the article, they said that the reason they did it was because of the 172 different species, species, mm-hmm. species of uh, birds and then 33 species of mammals and then some other stuff um, that they were hoping to harvest and sell. <laughs> I hate you so much. It does not say that. But there will, oh, as usual, be a link in our show notes that you can get click you to on. Spit your beer, Jiminy Christmas, Dustin. I think you're. <laughs> oh, so angry. I just feel like if you're watching like a some sort of superhero movie, let's call it I don't know Avengers, and there was like a supervillain. Revengers this would butt be play. T- this would t- <laughs> totally be like the front we're like oh come on down to brazil where we're planting replanting this forest because i only do good things secretly there's a missile silo no that would be a bond villain that wouldn't be a revengers butt play villain okay but okay it's like secretly like a teleportation device to another universe Mm -hmm. now i'm more in the in the realm of avengers yeah maybe a little bit yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen it because I didn't go because I'm here with you, Stephen Van Elk, the come around boy. Sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry. Justin, 
Do you want to move on to our next thing? Uh, pain yeah. for... Okay. So I was in a wedding shaming group, and I saw this weird article come up. Is that the name of the group? Wedding shaming? It was, that's it, I'm wedding shaming. That's the name of the group. Really? Yeah, it has like 90,000 people in it. It's a terrible, wow. terrible group. You that know sounds the, like uh, just the lowest of low yeah. places. <laughs> You know the the thanks for joining that for us. The Star Wars engagement <laughs> photo session, yeah, that I yeah, posted in I our group. It. Yeah, that loved was in it. that. That's it. I'm wedding shaming group. People were shaming it. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were like, uh, "Really? For an engagement shoot? Like the pictures are good and all, but for an engagement shoot?" And I was like, "Piss off! I hate every single one of you." Yeah, I was like, why not take advantage? You're paying good money for this engagement session. And if you're like super into Harry, you're not Harry Potter, Star Wars, yeah. like go all in. Harry Potter, the boy who came. Be, let your nerd, f- geek, freak, flag fly high. Who cares if your parents say that maybe you were adopted after you used those photos for your save the date? Yeah, yeah, their their child was adopted from Yavin 4. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can really fulfill your destiny of becoming a true Jedi because yeah. now you know there's a chance that Han Solo is your true father. Is he? Or isn't he? Is he? We'll have to wait till Christmas to find out. Dustin, you're working so hard to try to get some Star Wars references in there. I like it a lot. So um, Ian and I watched... The Force Awakens the other day. We're still slowly making our way through all the Star Wars movies. Um, He's much more, much, much more into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, unfortunately. But kind of fortunately, like, like there's just more of those movies. You better get through those before Disney pulls them all. They're going to put them on their service. They've already said that. I know, but then you got to pay for another effing service. Yeah. Which service will I cancel to afford the $6.99 service? Uh, probably anchor (laughs) (laughs) i'll stop supporting other people's podcasts on anchor so there is a blog it's a wedding forward it's a terrible terrible blog post jen and i actually went through and broke it all down in the most recent episode of wedded because it was so bad and we wanted to point out everything that was wrong with it uh but it's called things brides regret not doing at their wedding and the reason i wanted to bring this up on the wedding photo hangover podcast is because the very first thing on the list of regrets is that brides regret not paying for photos that don't have a watermark on them Mm -hmm. i would regret that too yeah have you ever heard of that do you yeah do you deliver professional photos to your clients with a watermark on them? Yes. You've talked about this before. You deliver photos that they can print that have no watermark, and then you deliver photos for them to use on social media that do have a watermark. Correct. So that's totally I, different. This is saying all your photos will be mar- watermarked. Yeah, I think it was uh, Ben over at Style & Story. They do this. Oh, yuck. And, Sorry, Ben. And... And he was telling me about it. And we've thought about trying to make that work. It, what it does is essentially it increases print sales. So you give them a package that says you get the digital files, right? Because everybody wants the digital files. But then when you have your initial client meeting and you're laying out your package offerings, like you get an album, you get this, you get that, um, you kind of slide in there that the digital files are web quality oh oh files. man i didn't realize that you were gonna tell everybody that they should lie to their clients and try to cheat not them. lie yeah it's no no lie. yeah no this isn't a scummy business practice at all you're right no it's just simply leaving room on the table to upsell them later this sounds like a way i never want to do business and i feel like i would hate a photographer who tried to do this to me I think as long as the bride is, you know, knows what they're getting into. Um, But if you put a huge emphasis on print, which I think we're seeing sort of that turn, we're seeing a lot of photographers realize like, okay, how can I make more money doing what I love? Mm -hmm. I need to sell more things. What's Mm -hmm. the easiest thing for me to sell? Cameras. Prints. Lenses. (laughs) 
I need to sell my gear and get the heck out of Dodge and go work at Best Buy. <laughs> They've got a pretty cool camera shop in Best Buy here now. They uh, they do educational classes there too. That's right. That's right. Now hiring. Get a whopping 12 bucks an hour if you apply now. It's steady work. It's good work. It's honest work, Dustin. Not like the work you're talking about right here where you try to deceive clients. Someone's got to sling those monster cables. <laughs> Somebody's got to sling those gold-plated monster cables. <laughs> That's right. But so, so you've never heard of anyone doing this? Never, never, ever. Hmm. The closest I've heard of this is you with uh, delivering <laughs> social photos that have a watermark on them. Uh, no, but like the thing that really pissed me off about this is then they continue on to say that you want to get the photos, you want to pay for the photos that don't have a watermark on them because then you can submit your photos to wedding blogs. I have never had a bride ever, ever that I can think of that's ever done that. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of brides doing that, but or you, you live in Indy and you take really good photos. See, I live in Fort Wayne and you don't take very good photos <laughs> where my bride gets married and she's like, I'm done with this wedding. My photos look spectacular, but I'll look at them next year. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jen and I have ever had a bride try to submit our photos. Maybe one time. But here's the problem with that. The bride doesn't own the copyright to the photos. The bride can't submit photos to a blog. Yeah, that would be true. I don't know. That would be That would be kind of a gray area. I feel like that could be a gray area. Unless it explicitly says in your contract that they can't. It's not a gray area. It's copyright law. <laughs> it's not a gray area in the United States of America. But I don't think submitting to a contest is breaking their privilege on the digital files you sent to them. As long as they're acknowledging you shot them. And as long as the contest isn't stating that they could use said photos in any way, shape, or form other than the contest, which is typically not true. The reason most people run contests is to use the photos for promotional means for like a magazine or advertisement purposes. So you just undercut your own point. You want to keep going on this one and undercut yourself some more? No, I'm just saying that, you know, obviously a bride and groom isn't going to submit to a blog with, you know, Venice. Venice, that is not the right word. Volition? Is that the right word? No. Sounds cool, though. I, I like you saying Venice, though. A city in <laughs> Italy. That was great. But I don't think they're trying to do wrong by their photographers by submitting to a contest. If anything, I think they're excited about their photos and they're trying to submit them. What I would hope a bride and groom would do this is This wasn't just... for a contest, though. This was just to get published, to get their wedding published. That's That's what the blog's saying. Just... You know, you want to submit your, your wedding to get published because it's so important when you plan a wedding to think about getting it published. I mean, our local Fort Wayne magazine does a wedding issue each year. And I had one of our brides reach out to us because she saw some like Facebook post saying like, submit your wedding photos for next year's issue or whatever. And one of our brides reached out to us and was really excited and like, Dustin, should I do this or will you do this? Can you, we really want to submit our photos for this? And I'm like, I'll take care of it. Don't you worry. But it might help your chances if you send them a little nudgy email saying, hey, my photographer's submitting my photos. Wait, but in that situation, the bride reached out to you for permission. Correct. So that's what I was going to finish with before you interrupted me. I'm sorry I kept you from finishing. That's okay. It's what you do best. <laughs> in a perfect world, a bride would reach out to you and just say, you know, they've seen an opportunity or they've seen something where they're like, I really like this website. I really like this blog. But there is obviously a good chance that Stephen and I don't shoot for that type of client mm -hmm. that cares more about getting their wedding on a blog than they do about well, just simply Dustin, getting married. Uh, 
We don't live in the uncivilized parts of the United States of America. We live in the Midwest, not the West. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, That's true. There's a, it's a bunch of lawless ruffians out there to the West of us, and uh, they're out there, you know, committing crimes, submitting photos to whatever blogs they want without a photographer's permission. <laughs> I, want to, I just want to know what kind of accent that is. Is that like sort of your proctor? I don't know. It's just whatever came to my mind as I wanted to talk about this. Come on, Dustin. Get on board. Where's your accent? Is it supposed to be like an upper class kind of old Englishman that lost his accent <laughs> on the way English over? Man lost his accent. <laughs> I did come over here straight from England. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's trying desperately to claim to his English heritage. <laughs> Maybe he married a Texas woman. <laughs> I don't really know what's going I on. I love right this now. so much. Yeah, no, let's keep on with this. Just trying to get to the root of the heritage that's coming out of your mouth. <laughs> All right, Dustin. You, I'll I'll do this accent. You give me the Texas woman accent. Let's go. <laughs> Texas woman. <laughs> Come on, I oh, married you. What, Speak up. So what else is, nothing else on this list really burnt you at the ends? Uh, there was other stuff on the list. I mean, like I said, Jen and I did an entire episode. People people regret not doing family pictures? Yeah, Jen and I did an entire episode on this, so it's kind of like retreading stuff I've already talked about, but... Maybe you shouldn't have done another episode. On maybe it. I shouldn't do another podcast. Oh my gosh. No, that was really the only thing that made me upset. Let's talk about what we really want to talk about. Yeah, let's talk about what Just we really want to talk about. Anti-selfies. What are anti-selfies? Only the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. So Steven shared a beautiful viral thing that's going around the interwebs. Oh, the um, Ant-Man selfies about the person who can get real big and real small and can communicate with insects. Uh, Steven, we're not talking about your uh, genitalia here. We're talking about... <laughs> My genitalia features pretty heavily in the Revengers butt play. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think it makes an appearance there in one of those space scenes. <laughs> so this woman plays dead in major historical locations uh, and then posts them as death selfies. So, Dustin, uh, I posted this. You loved everything about it. So, tell tell me, wh what is it that grabs you about this? My favorite is the one of her by, is it the San Francisco Bridge? Golden Gate Bridge? Mm-hmm. Where, as I'm scrolling through, I'm like, wow, that's a great picture of the bridge. And then as you keep scrolling, she's laying face down on the rocks. <laughs> but I think the more uh, cultural indication that these bring out in the photos of just these onlookers looking at her just like what is going on doing absolutely nothing just kind of shows us as a society are so disconnected from human touch communication well, I mean, love i don't know about you dustin but like have you like when you come across a dead body is it always laying straight face down with the legs spread and the arms on each side always always steve like typically when i come across a dead body the dead body is kind of crumpled in a disgusting disfiguring sort of way these just look like a work of art the way that she's uh laid down like this I might come across this and think she just fell asleep. Yeah, I don't think if I was a passerby, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be like, mm, she's clearly napping. Yeah, no, maybe she's got a little bit of the narcolepsy and she just falls asleep sometimes face first. <laughs> well, the one that's like, looks like a marathon. She even has like what looks like marathon wardrobe on. Mm -hmm. I really like the one where she's on the steps. Yes. Yeah. She's talented. She's talented at falling down face first with her legs spread. I want to meet her parents. I want to talk to them and just oh, they want to be want like, to meet yeah. Her parents. Okay, where are we going with this one, buddy? Come on. I just want to meet the mom and dad who, you know, go to dinner parties uh, or, you know, lunch after church and they talk about their dear daughter, Stephanie, who they're so proud of for making a living as a viral artist falling down. At national landmarks. See, now they would love to go to those parties and talk about that, but they're too busy planking at all those parties. 
<laughs> they're trying to catch on. Yeah. Or maybe her parents started this, yeah. but it's before the age of Instagram. <laughs> You know, I heard a lot of viral stuff is uh, genealogical, and it gets passed down from generation to generation. It's in your DNA. There you go. So, in honor of this artist, Stephanie, Stephen and I will do an anti-selfie. Yeah, go for it right now. I will continue on with the rest of the podcast while you do that. The anti-podcast. So, Dustin, seen as Revenger's butt play is coming out. Very soon. Um, I wanted to talk about this is this is a little bit little bit of an oldie, but a goodie here. Mm-hmm. Dustin, did you see the Wakanda inspired newborn shoot? I sure did. So we wanted to. Uh, this is this is part of me just trying to highlight all the good stuff in the world because we've been highlighting so much bad stuff in the past few weeks. So this photographer went and uh, c- their name is Kanisha Fisher. And they went and did uh, photos of babies as if they were in a Wakanda nursery, Mm -hmm. right? That's kind of like the idea behind this whole thing. And she calls it Wakanda Beginnings. And it is... Can't imagine how much she spent like making these outfits. No, dude, it is amazing. Like there is, of course, a Black Panther one, which is fantastic. Of course, at the bottom of the blog post. Wait, what? I said they put that one at the bottom of the blog post. Very top photo. He's in the center. Or she. I, I don't know. It could be either with a baby. It's really hard to tell. I just want to say one thing. When I started my career in the world of photography, I named my company Flash Photography. Oh, you and did. everybody made fun of me. Yes, they should have. And this company is once upon a Flash Photography. Now it's okay because there's cute little babies involved. No, it's okay because they're good. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. Everyone loved Comic Sans back there, Stephen, back then. <laughs> I want to go oh. to this person's website and I hope it's in Comic Sans. No, mine was in Comic Sans. Oh my gosh, yours was in Comic Sans? That's back when I had like a Geo Cities Geo Cities page, buddy. That's how old I am. Not that old. Do, okay, got it. Do you it. remember Geo Cities? <laughs> Yes, I do remember GeoCities. There are still some GeoCities sites out there that uh, talk about me. And I think Yahoo bought them, if I remember correctly. At some point in time. Most of them are shut down now, but there's a few that are still left. Like if you stayed I, active, I it probably, would stay up. I probably have one floating around. I'm pretty certain mine is, or not mine, my brother-in-law's is still up, in which he has a quote from me from when we were in high school, uh, where I was trying to explain to him... The size of the a quote s- reads, I'm Stephen Van Elk, and someday I will be a great Indiana man. <laughs> no, I was trying to explain to him because he had missed like biology or something that day. I forget what it was, but I was trying to explain to him what we had learned in biology about the sperm whale and the size of its penis. And I said, I think, I, th- I believe what I said was, the sperm whale's penis is so large, you could cut it off, put a basketball hoop on top, and it'd be regulation size. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is pretty good, Stephen. And that's still somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Take that one to the bank. So if you Google sperm whale, comma, Stephen Van Elk, comma, regulation size. Penis. That little gem should roll across your browser feed. It was, it was still up like three or four years ago. I don't know if it still is. Wouldn't surprise oh, me, though. We'll unearth it. <laughs> Our listeners are the best detectives. The best detectives. Dustin, speaking of people trying to figure things out, do you want to do some Q&A? Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve. First up, from Alicia Semrock from our very own Facebook group. So this is my wedding day nightmare. Every couple I've ever shot has only ever wanted immediate family photos for their formals one of my brides until now until now the story of one bride that sent me a list of 55 groupings with extended family members and friends you gotta read it more like one bride sent a list 55 groupings with extended family members to one photographer yeah, I know. That was perfect. Uh, Alicia continues, I think I would legit keel over if I had to do this. It's looking like she wants to turn the formals into mini portrait sessions 
or damn near every guest, which I kind of feel is taking advantage of my time. Does anyone put a limit on the amount of groupings for formal portraits on a wedding day? Or do you just give the couple what they want? <clears throat> uh, you know, as come around Steve, I would say you always give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to leave yeah. everybody satisfied. You know what I'm saying, Dustin? It, so, Alicia, honestly, I think you're missing the big picture here. Steve gave you great advice earlier. Since you don't give the couple unwatermarked digital files, you're setting yourself up to sell a <laughs> shitload of print photos yeah, to print these sales. families. We're rolling in. So I think you will be money ahead, a.k.a. your time is more worth it now that you're doing these extra family groupings. You're welcome. You're welcome. The little Moana song just always rolls through my head. Yeah, does it? Mm -hmm. Let me get let me get a few more bars of that, buddy. I want to hear uh, it. Copy, copyright in all. Yeah, Steve can't, can't afford it. Don't want to get sued. Yeah, no, no, no. That's good. That's good. I like I want that. the rock knowing what I'm cooking. You know what I mean? So yeah, Alicia, uh, we do everything and anything uh, our brides want. Uh, the more family photos they want, personally, I'm like, yes, please. Uh, because all that does is force them to do a first look. And because when you're like, oh, you want to do 55 groups? Just break it out into time. Brides don't understand how long it takes to do family pictures. So if you just quantify it with something super simple like... Okay, you want 55 groups. Let's say it'll take two minutes to do each group. I think that's conservative. Yeah. Um, that'll be about two hours. So, you know, let's just make sure we have two hours to do family pictures. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Two hours? We wanted to do this in like 22 minutes and then spend the rest of the time on bridal party portraits. And so you're like, oh, well, I guess I could do it faster, but then they're going to look like shit. Mm, so maybe yeah. we do all the bridal party and bride and groom stuff before the wedding. I like the, then it'll look like shit defense. I find myself using that all the time. A bride and a groom's like, Steve, we really want to do some photos together around maybe like a half hour before sunset. And I'm just like, we could do it then, but then it'll just look like shit. Why don't we yep. push it back to actual sunset when it'll look not shitty, you know? Yeah. Um, then every once in a while I get something that's just like, uh, Hey Steve, um, we really would love it if you could come an hour early. And I'm like, yeah, no, we could do that. But then I would just look like shit. <laughs> and if I look like shit, your photos will definitely look like shit. Because if I can't take care of me, I can't take care of you. So we have a wedding. I'm not going to say when it is because this, this hasn't Cause happened Because you're going to look like shit. <laughs> but the, the bride wanted to do sunset photos. And I was super jazzed because like, to actually have a bride that's like, I want to do sunset photos. I'm like, yes, let's build it into the schedule because I build it in anyways. And so I sent the schedule over to her and she's like, ah, oh, I was kind of thinking we would do sunset photos more like during dinner. And I was like, oh, I did, are, are we doing dinner much later? And she's like, no, dinner's like around five. I'm like, well, sun, sunset's not to like eight, eight thirty. And she's like, okay, well, I just, I kind of thought we'd do sunset photos more like during, you know, dinner time when we can sneak out. And I'm like, I wanted so badly, Steve, this is what I wanted to say. This was what was almost leaving my mouth before I caught it and pulled it back in was, let me call the sun for you. Let me check its schedule. See if maybe I can get it to go to bed a little bit earlier for you. It might not be the cheapest option, but I think we might be able to pull some strings, a.k.a. pull that sun down for you a little earlier might cause some slight global disasters with tidal changes, might wipe out an island, but I think we can get it down three hours early for you. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds like a great idea, Dustin. I, I hope you keep that in your back pocket for the wedding day when they're like, you know, we've been thinking about it, and we do think we want to go ahead and do the sunset photos at dinner time. We've thought about yeah. it for a while, and we really want to do that. 
We really think with all of those pro photo speed lights you bought to bring to our wedding, you could emulate sunset for us at five. Yeah, no. Yeah, you just got to get those pro photo flashes, right, buddy? Yeah, they're just going to say Godex, but other than that, <laughs> they're pro photo flashes. <laughs> Do the Godox make a? Do they do they make a flash as powerful as the Pro Photo? Big powerful flashes. I don't know if they're as powerful. I haven't actually looked at the specs yet because I was not wanting to get my hopes up that they ever actually came to market. But uh, from what I heard from uh, Boo Ray and Gary's podcast about it, they said that they were moving forward with production uh, regardless of the suit against Pro Photo suit from Pro Photo. That is correct. They did say that on the Photobomb podcast. Doesn't were you doing research? Uh yeah, Steve. Yeah. I listened to one episode so I could <laughs> recognize their voice. <laughs> you asshole. So, Dustin, uh, do we do we knock this one out of the park for Alicia with these uh these crazy family photos and how to get out of it? Or do we need to figure out an, another a few a way to worm our way, weasel our way out of this one? Yeah, so what I would tell Alicia, second set of advice I would give Alicia, if she really is apprehensive about doing more family portraits, is just have the couple send the family to her the, you know, the week prior to the wedding, shoot them all on white, and then just composite that shit. Bada bing, bada boom, easy peasy. Okay, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, that, that was it? That was it? You just send yeah, the family easy. a week early... To your studio Mm -hmm. that you have to rent. Of course, you'll charge the bride and groom for this because you just don't have the time. This is the, if they don't go for the first look option and they're like, well, we need to do photos and everything after the ceremony. Great. Send each family grouping to me individually. (laughs) I will shoot them on white and then we will just composite all the different groupings you need after the fact together. I mean, yeah, no, that works great. Man, you know, I feel like I feel like we should just move on to the next question. I don't got anything for this one. Okay. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for you, Alicia. If you need any other advice, reach out to me. Alicia got a lot of great advice in the Facebook group already. So, if, Oh, perfect. If anybody out there is, is wondering <laughs> what some good advice would be for that, just jump in the Facebook group. You know what I'm saying? That's where, yeah, people are. Yeah, that is where people are. Dustin, oh my gosh. I just wanted to say... We just got some follow-up. While we were recording, Dustin, do you want to hear about this? Do you want this to come in hot right now? Give me that hot take, this Steve. This follow-up comes from Go Ring Bat. Go Ring says, I see a trend. First, the robot photographer. Now, the Froyo bot. What is the world coming to? Pretty easy to answer that question. It is coming to an end. Coming to robots, then an end. Period. Dot, 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 death. Selfies. Love it. Goring went ahead and posted this. It's uh, robotfranchise.com. And he went ahead and posted this into our Facebook group. And these robots also look very similar to the Eva robot that was uh, doing the photos for the photo booth. Very, very similar design. So maybe, maybe, sh- maybe Eva, when she's not doing photos, maybe she's slinging Froyo on the side. Girls got to make a living. I like the idea that the movie Wall-E changed the way we perceive robots, <laughs> for better yeah. or worse. Probably worse. <laughs> robots were supposed oh. to be like these cool steel mechanical thing death machines you know that's what they're supposed to look like uh every like single terminator. one was a terminator yeah or mm-hmm. a cyberman or a dalek you know you know just just really really scary scary okay cyberman and daleks are scary let's be honest Ugh. but sorry just doctor who was over here but you know you know how we do yeah, i was like i have no idea what he's talking about yeah, he's you know. going down a tangent watch out yeah but but now we have these like weird friendly creepy robots that uh that look like owls mm, yeah no they got really big blue eyes it's creepy looking i imagine if i saw one of these things and these ones the froyo bots they're like spunky dude like i look at these guys and i think to myself when they're not slinging that froyo 
they're probably out at the skate park doing some sick tricks, you know? I bet they could do uh 180, maybe a 360. They're, mm-hmm. they're really, really going for it. They could probably pull a 420, you know what I'm saying? Who who doesn't know what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I would love to see these robots with uh, their eyes just a little bit bloodshot. That'd be cool. They look I like agree. they could use some weed. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, man. What if what if these Froyo bots were being sold in California or Colorado or Washington or Oregon or Canada, all of Canada, and you you could have these Froyo bots slinging Froyo with the weed right in it. You know what I'm saying? THC. Let's get these robots high. How do we get robots high? That's what I want to know. You put jetpacks on them. Next question. You know, I'm just looking for how we stop the robot apocalypse. And if the robots are baked 24-7, they're not going to be killing us. Well, Steve, I think you just answered your own question. That's why we won't be able to stop the robot apocalypse. Secretly, the robots have infiltrated our computer systems, and they are slowly affecting uh, legislation in the U.S. government to slowly make weed legalized across the u.s thus making it easier for them to overthrow us steven van elk oh sorry went down a conspiracy theory black hole there there was like this real weird thing that happened back in the day uh panda bears were going to rise up and overthrow humans it looked pretty eminent we were all about to Mm -hmm. die and some some mad scientist was like what if we gave them this great stuff called bamboo it doesn't affect humans but look what happens to these panda bears well, when they get their I'd hands like to think, on this bamboo. And now pandas are just high all the time. High as kites. And they can't attack us. We're safe from pandas. Problem what solved. What I like to think, though, Steve, it's a is panda that they, solution. Gave them, they gave them these long bark-like things. And then they were like, let us call it bamboo. I, I don't... What was that? I just feel like the name is fitting for the desired result. I would like to think that they cause and effectal relationship of the naming of bamboo came from the need for the pandas to be in a more relaxed state to thus not overthrow the yeah, human yeah, population. No, when I'm thinking about putting pandas mm-hmm. in a relaxed state, I think, yeah, uh, let's choose a word that is two onomatopoeias, so bam and boo, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that'll just, uh, okay, those aren't really onomatopoeias, let's be honest, but bam is like, ah, something scary, bam, a gun went off, I but don't then, know, boo, boo, that's my ghost coming up because I'm dead now. But I could totally see you walking into a pot shop in Denver, Colorado, and being like, some guy moseying up in his tie-dye t-shirt and his long hair with his super dark glasses and saying, hey, we got the bamboo on special today. Uh, It's extra kush, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, bamboo? They give that to pandas. I think they would have to call it, for humans, bang gasp, you know? That way we get the onomatopoeias in now because it's like you got shot like a gun, bang. That's that's an onomatopoeia. And then gasp, like when you gasp, you know, when you when you die, like that last oh, gasp. Huh? You say gasp and you gasp, right? That's that's how it works. Mm, I say Damn Steven. it, I missed the onomatopoeia again. <laughs> Steven. Oh, all Bang right, side. moving on. Damn it. Next question. Next question. Who's this one come from, Dustin? You got you got something pulled up? You wanna you wanna give us a little something something? Let's let's drop it like it's hot. Caleb from a random Facebook group asks the following question. Is there a way to get rid of the photographer's camera flash? I swear. If we were shooting on the surface of the sun, this dumb photographer would still have her flash on. I feel like I need to read that in like a valley girl accent. But I assume Caleb in this scenario is a videographer. Yeah, well, Caleb, you dumb idiot. Of course, if you're shooting on the surface of the sun, the photographer would have their flash on. What do you want? Your subject to be lit from underneath them? That's spooky vibes, (laughs) Caleb. You're going to have the shadows going up over their face. Like, it's not Halloween, Caleb. What are you thinking about, Caleb? 
Gee, I'm any Christmas. I bet Let's Caleb's see, out there lighting Halloween. people for all his videos by taking a flashlight and putting it right underneath their chin. Yeah, Caleb, way to go, buddy. Replicating that sunshine. Jeez, of course that of course that photographer need to needs to pop flash when she's working with you, Caleb. Yeah, I've got really nothing to add to that one. Yeah, that was yeah because Caleb so well is a answered. worthless piece of shit. I think we can all agree on this one. And and valuable listener to this podcast. From a random Facebook group. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover podcast with Dustin and Steve. If you want to help us out, jump on iTunes or Stitcher. Leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Wedding Photo Hangover or on Twitter at Wed Pick Hangover. Dustin, my man, is on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben and Steven is at Steven Van Elk. If you want to get involved with the awesome community of listeners, join the Wedding Hangover Facebook group. But if you really want to warm our hearts, I do, I do, I do. on over to, what is it, stevendustinsavetheworld.com? Steve and Dustin save the world. Head on over jingle. to stevendustinsavetheworld.com and you can sign up to support us for as little as a dollar a month. It's extremely helpful to us and to the making of this podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Your head is pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. That's right, next Sunday after you shoot another wedding. Another wedding. Boom, boom, boom. Dustin, it was, it was great podcasting with you tonight. Dustin, I just finished watching The Umbrella Academy. Oh. Have you watched that do yet? Tell. I was the one that told you about it, because you made all these umbrella jokes about how they made umbrellas and it was maybe really rainy where they lived and how sad it must be to grow up in a place where they need umbrellas for their academy now that does sound like me <laughs> i have no Something memory of that. this at all it's because you're a goldfish steve hello i'm steve <laughs> hello i'm steve oh hey how are you oh hi i'm steve i'm a goldfish Oh, damn. Damn. I was, I was hoping you would forget something at some point in time in this episode and I could bring that back on you, but no. No. Slayed. Slayed by my own sword. Stabbed through fall, the heart. Fall on it, samurai. Fall on it. Shot through the heart. It's too late. Shot through the heart. I don't know that song. Anyways, so what'd you think of the Umbrella Academy? I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it, too. Uh, so, like, the the thing that really caught me, though, was the very first episode. There's the mm -hmm. shot of the dude walking out of the trailer on the moon. And mm -hmm. the trailer is like this real yellow color. I think there might be some blue in it too. And it really okay. smacked hard of the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Like the way it was framed, the music that was playing, and uh, the, the color scheme of the trailer and stuff. And just like the juxtaposition of like, he's going through doing normal stuff. And then the next thing you see is, oh, he's walking outside on the moon to throw trash in a dumpster on the moon. And it just had a very Wes Anderson-y, kitschy, like, sort of feel to it. Then it smacked me again later in that first episode. The whole show kind of has that vibe. Mm, first episode does. Later in that first episode, they do the thing where they're all dancing in the house, you know? Mm -hmm. And it zooms out. And as it zooms out, it's, it's supposed to look like they're in a model of the house. Kind of like in The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou when Wes Anderson had a, uh, what was it, like, two-thirds scale size uh model built of the submarine that they shot like all the scenes in and then they use that to do like all the side shots and stuff where like you saw the dolphins swimming under the submarine and stuff and you could see what everybody's doing in their compartments and then later in that first episode or maybe it's earlier in the first episode i forget when but uh there was a shot where the guy was walking with the strollers and the mother was pushing like the very last one or whatever. And then it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're playing a kink song. And it's like, man, this is so Wes Anderson. -y. This is straight up my alley. Like this is everything I want. Everything, everything I've ever loved. Mm -hmm. Even down to like the eccentric billionaire, very, very, you know, life aquatic with Steve Zissou sort of feel to it. Um, who has a monkey butler. <laughs> I think that was my favorite little like twist point there when they like introduced the monkey butler. Mm, like, a good as if twist the show... would have been if the monkey was the billionaire and the guy you thought was the billionaire was the butler. I feel like monkey I was butler is like, that. you know. Spoiler alert, that doesn't happen. Yeah. But that is what I was waiting for is to be like, oh, wait, 
somehow he transferred his consciousness and now he is the he's the monkey now dog he never he never died but yeah no yeah. uh so i mean there are a lot of really nice touches like that but then as the like second episode picked up it was just like all that like really well thought out well like like placed things like where they you could tell somebody had really spent a lot of time thinking about how they wanted that first episode to look and feel and like the second episode is just like well it was a good episode but like none of that stuff that like took it up to like another level for me was there in the second episode and then like the rest of the series is just like not there at all that's probably because in all honesty they probably Wait, that was blew like, the whole you know, budget on that first episode. <laughs> no, I was going to say that they probably spent a ton of time and energy making that pilot episode to get the series. And then... It was on Netflix. Do they even make pilots on Netflix anymore? I feel like they have to submit something to Netflix to get a series green light. I think Netflix just says, your series is green light. The first season is the pilot. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We got nothing but money. Well... <laughs> I thought you told me they were running out of money last week. Did I? Did you? Maybe. I don't know. They didn't have to pay taxes, so maybe they're okay now. But, I mean, you know me. I'm just, uh, you say something one week, and the next re- week I try to get it to come around. Or you forget it. Or and I forget it. Like, I'm Stephen Van Elk. I'm a goldfish. Damn you. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I can't wait for season two of that show. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be cool. Uh, no, we didn't do any spoilers, really. I mean, we kind of talked about the first episode. It's it's a very interesting show. It's about uh, people with superpowers. It's a comic book thing. It's written by the guy who was a lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Mm-hmm. And I, there was some other person who helped him either write it or drew it. I'm not really certain what the relationship was there, but it's really cool. I liked it a lot. It's, is it based on a book or a comic? Comic. Or it's comic. either based on a comic book or a graphic novel. I'm not certain which it was. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to go out I, and track that down and read that, you know? Yeah. No, it's, uh, I, as we referenced on earlier episodes when I brought this up that I watched it. Who? I'm really big into anything involving time travel. And uh, the whole series, spoiler alert, is kind of semi about that. There's there there is some time travel in it, yeah. And causality. I'm really into causality. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Tell tell me more about causality. Um, I want to hear about Dustin's philosophy. Oh, just like cause and effect, like the fact that oh, it's like if something tra- happens, something else will happen. <laughs> is that what you mean? <laughs> well, no, more the fact that if you try to change the outcome of something, did you really change it or? Did something else occur later or earlier, depending on how you look at time, that actually made it stay the same course? I don't know. Perhaps we'll never know. What course are we on right now? A horse is a horse, of course, of course. And nobody talks (laughs) to a horse, of course. Unless, of course, that horse is Mr. Ed. Dustin, it is super late. We got to go. Thank you so much for podcast. Did you just finish your summer shandy? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, give, give me a sec, duh. give me a sec. Gulp, 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 gulp. And now I have also finished my beer. I definitely didn't finish it earlier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we're all good friends here. I try to pace my beer as a social drinker, so I pace it throughout a conversation, only breaking to drink when appropriate. Unlike Steven, who's shotguns it throughout an episode. Um, throughout an episode <laughs> i would love to know who shotguns throughout an episode you, you gotta be really bad at shotgunning and really good at talking with a mouth throat full of beer you are a talented man which is why we podcast together all right dustin i gotta go thank you so much for podcasting with me tonight goodbye buddy always a pleasure goodbye Hey guys, Dan here. I just wanted to stop in and say thank you so much for all the weekly content you produce. Um, It's helped me through a lot of hard poop sessions. Um, It really takes me to a place where I can just, you know, melt into the soothing voice of Dustin underscore McKibben and Stephen Van Elk. Um, It really, really is a great 
great Indiana podcast for two great Indiana men just like you. Just wanted to say thanks so much. Thanks, Dan Sangar. We are so glad we could help you poop. Steve and Dustin save the world. <laughs> Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs. Woo-wee.